The conversations on this podcast are between the host and the guest and are not directed at any member of the general public. The information is for your listening pleasure, but is not offering you any personal advice. If you have heard something that you feel may be relevant to yourself, please visit your medical practitioner or mental health provider. A quick introduction for those of you who haven't listened to the podcast before. I'm Daniel, and each week I bring you a conversation with someone who I think is inspirational or brings something inspiring to the podcast. It's about things that change or could change our lives, and that's why I called it Life Changes You. Listen to the range of topics around psychology, mental health, and inspiration, and find out how life changes you. Hello and welcome to Life Changes You. Another week, uh, another guest, a really good guest this time. Someone that I haven't really spoken to in the past because they've never really come up, but I have been watching this guy for a while. Well, not watching him in a stalker sense, but just watching what he does and how he helps people transform. And so it's Ben Heron and he's from Dubai. He's a men's transformation expert and he works on optimizing your body performance and life so the complete package not just physical but also transforming you your mindset how you feel about things all different things like that so anyway hello ben how are you i am very well it's midday so far here but yeah it's good how are you it's 7 p.m. here, so it's good to talk to people who are sort of more in a, an earlier time slot than having to record at 9 o'clock at night or 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm sure you have much better conversations and there's your brain's clogging, your brain's ticking and things are going for you, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot better than the 6 a.m. calls because then you're up at 4.30 and getting ready and drinking lots of coffee when you should still be asleep. Yeah, that's where the lack of sleep comes that we were talking about before the, the, the episode. <laughs> Yeah. So do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into what you're doing now? So yeah, guys, I'm Ben. I'm Ben Short for Benedict. And ultimately, yeah, my company is called Level Up and I've leveled up. And uh, really, there was a period in my life where I really didn't like who I was. I didn't like my body. I didn't like where I was going in life. I didn't like the internal talk that was going on in my mind. And this was down to a whole host of different scenarios and things, but I don't think we need to unpack all that but really i decided to take charge bit by bit and started with my body and i realized that with each and every single individual as daniel's alluded to there here we help you level up like that's what i do like i help you start off with the body but then i help you level up your performance and level up your mind so that you can really just live life on your terms so that you can really progress for me ultimately with that like when I was really just unhappy and not liking my body, started off with the body. Then I started to document it. I started to showcase it. I wrote a post and it went uh, viral and it got over a thousand shares. And it was all about New Year's resolutions and why they're a good thing. So they are because I had done mine and um, because it was my little target. And that was really my entry to the fitness industry because pretty much without even realizing it, I was inspiring and helping other people change their bodies. Then ultimately, someone reached out and asked me to become a personal trainer. And I really, I didn't want to be a personal trainer. <laughs> so I didn't know I have led personal trainers all over the world. I didn't want to be one. Um, yeah. I just fell into it for doing what I was doing and sharing. Then from there, my first client I lost nine stone in 10 months. Um, I would describe... What's, what's stone in kilos? There's around seven kilos in a stone. So there is... What is that? That's my math. 63. I'm just working it out. 63 kilos. 63. Yeah, 63 kilos in 10 months. That is too. So she, yeah. she worked, again, I worked with everyone and anyone. So she lost that amount in 10 months. Um, I then... 10 months? Yeah, yeah. Like this is, That's incredible. Yeah, so I worked with some really high level individuals. I worked with like politicians. I worked with professional athletes. I, I got very busy very quick. Like, because really I didn't, I wasn't the best skilled coach but i would describe myself back then as like a butler coach like i just gave you i i gave my my ethos was i suffocated any possible excuse you could ever have so i just right. was like annoyingly here's an answer here's an answer here's an answer have you done this have you done that 
but it worked so it did don't get me wrong then later down the line I uh, educated and that's a big part so that you can ultimately I have a belief that each and every single person has a genius coach within them and it's my job my duty to help them unlock their ability to coach themselves so that's how I progressed but I got really busy really quick. I coached anyone and everyone. And yeah, I burnt myself out quite early. Um, again, at 22 years old, I was personal trainer of the year in my own country. And when I burnt myself out, I was in, I went on holiday to Thailand to get a bit of space because I was just like, this has progressed so fast. Like what? Like why? And like, this is just a young lad who's just extremely passionate and is like coaching all these different people and doing all these things. So when I... I just sat down with a pen and a piece of paper and I was like, what has actually happened here? And I wrote down 16 pages in a cafe. So I was with my, my ex-partner at the time and I was like, I just need a day of space. And like, I just went to this random uh, cafe and PP and wrote down everything and realized, whoa, like I went from this skinny fat dude to quite strong in my body and strong in my mind. And I came back and I created a coaching brand called Skinny to Strong. Now, this was back when, like, there was no, in the fitness industry, there was no, like, story. There was nothing unique. I was just, like, throwing stuff at the wall and, like, people liked it. (laughs) So I was the first ever skinny specialist in the UK. And the reason why I went with that was because, like I said earlier on, I didn't like who I was. I got bullied for years. The reason why I came to the gym was because people, I didn't like who I was. And the moment that drove me in was some, someone in the changing room basically said, look at your moves. And I didn't like the word skinny because people always define me and just through that term. When you actually type it into Google, I typed it in one day, it's unattractively thin. You would never use that word. You are unattractively thin. I also felt yeah. that there was no real... There was no real information. It was just eat more, do this. And I'd done that and at more, put on the mask in it, but I felt crap. I felt crap in my digestion. I felt crap about myself. I just, it wasn't sustainable. So I needed like a way of doing things. Like I remember my first ever plan that I bought off a coach. It was like, eat all these different crazy types of fish and all these different types of protein and all this. So I just needed my solution. I kind of found my solution from that. Now, I then on that and I coached, a lot of individuals, a lot of guys I specialized and I realized just my nature I'm quite I'm quite easy going more like the lad sort of chat just really people can connect with me it's not to say I can't coach girls I've mentored girls I've coached girls I've coached all different levels of what but just guys always tended to resonate with me and over time I started in my own personal journey to go for a stage where I realized that I was building myself up externally with loads of muscle and bodybuilding, but internally it was just, I wasn't, it it wasn't there. It was, it was coming from insecurity. So I done a lot of work on myself. I done a lot of, like I worked with a communication coach and then realized, oh, my communication is really poor. But the reason why it's really poor is because I lack emotion. And then I realized I was disconnected to myself and then I done years of therapy and things. And through my own journey, just naturally progressing in business, naturally progressing in my own personal journey, people started to seek me out to help them with that. And that's what I was like. For a year, I toured around and I was like, right, I'm just going to help people with what they ask. And then I created the Level Up Academy like a year later because I needed the name. I needed something that connotated the results. So when someone works with me, they're a different version of themselves, um, both physically and personally. While I was doing this, as we were saying offline, I fell in touch with a guy, Phil Grimm, who was one of my mentors. He's actually going to be on Netflix later this year. So the whole documentary on him. And I led my industry. I was the first coach in the fitness entrepreneur company. And yeah, for the last, I think, four to five years, I've been in there driving it forward with clients all over the world. And I've been building other businesses in the fitness space. And it's been incredible. So it's been, I know I feel like, I went through this sort of transition where I'm a real dude that has had a lot of normal problems like with his own confidence, but also as well, I've been growing my own career massively and I can really understand how to build muscle, how to build yourself confidence wise, but also as well, how to manage a very fast paced life 
and do it all at the same time and that's sort of what i coach and what i do now um and i i love it <laughs> so yeah that's a short story that's a long story you try to condense it all down <laughs> So that was just your introduction. So we've got loads to go then, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so. so you said you said before that you got burnt out. How long was that again in between from when you started to when you got burnt out? Uh, hitting the th- to third year mark, yeah. I've been burnt. I, I, I probably experienced a small level of burnout last year, but that first time that was real burnout and I just didn't have the capacity. I, I, I was... I was coaching all these people, but I wasn't running the business. I just didn't have the capacity. Bear in mind, I was 22 years old. So I was right. like, I just, I just didn't have the know-how. I just had to learn yeah. from doing that. But And I guess if you're coaching lots of people, I mean, that's your focus. And then to do all the work behind the scenes as well, you probably took on too many clients compared to what you needed to do in the background as well. Yeah, like I just ran... I just had loads of people always asking me for advice and helping and things. And I didn't realize there was many different hats to run on a coaching business. Like there's your admin, there's your marketing, there's your sales, there's your delivery, there's your fulfill- like the fulfillment of the service, there's your staff. Like back then I was doing everything. So I just didn't realize it. I just didn't, I just, everything was all like, let's run with this and let's see how it goes and find the problems out down the line. <laughs> And look, I think that's what a lot of people do with businesses because you can't always preempt what's going to happen to you. You just start a business and then as you're going along, you go, oh, shit, I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to do that. So you either learn it or you ask from someone or you get someone in to help you. So, you know, you started in the right place. You had all your customers. You just needed to work out the background stuff. Yeah, other things too, like when I actually sort of boil it back and if I was to look at that character too, I was 100% people pleasing. I was 100% just a lack of awareness of my energy and myself. And that's one one of the biggest things I've realized is energy is, is the key, biggest thing and the biggest resource that'll just like I I call it life bar. So like yeah, there's technical things like I didn't understand, but then there's also as well just like personal skills and personal awareness that I didn't have that back then. And I find that's probably one of the aspects that holds a lot of people back. And do you think you said before that you had a minor burnout a little while ago? Do you think that? from going through it the first time that taught you enough to be able to realize you were going through a small burnout and to fix that yeah it did it gave me definitely a higher level of awareness to sort of understand it but i think the difference yeah the difference was probably actually i think the first the first time was like i have so much things to do and so many things to fulfill that i i need to just that this is just overwhelm. Whereas the second thing, the second time that happened, it was more, yeah, knowing that and I had control over that, but it was actually giving myself permission, the rest, giving myself the permission. That was a different aspect. Um, and sometimes as well as, especially like, I, I, I specialize with driven guys. We are always conditioned to be more, 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 do, 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 do. And that connection yeah. to yourself and that ability to stop and just flow and that ability to just be present is the thing that's lacking in a lot of men. And ultimately, that's just something I've got a lot better at and something I've realized from doing that is just sometimes less is more. Yeah. And look, I mean, you obviously understand what's happened because, you know, you're working with all these different people. Say you're working with 10 people, you've got to keep your energy up on those 10 people. And they're all coming to you going, oh, I want to start this. So you're building them up to start start getting better, knowing themselves more. But then you've got the next man coming in who's the same position. You've got to build him up. So you're using excess energy to get these guys all started and then to keep the momentum going. So, you know, at your age and starting out, I mean, that's a fantastic thing. And to realize that that's your awareness is, you know, I'm doing too many things. I need to work out where to put my energy first. That's great. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think in general, it's, it's, it's honestly from coaching over a thousand individuals, it's the biggest thing that holds so many individuals back is just their overall energy management. And it's something I really dive into. And I really think that we, I I think it just in general, we need to educate people a lot more. 
I do feel very strongly about it. The reason why we're running into so many health issues, the reason why we're running into so many mental health issues, the reason why there's a lot of um, people as well just not fulfilling their potential is down to understanding their own energy. And some lessons, they do just need to be learned for experience. And that's just what I'm sort of, I've sort of done. But that's something that I really feel we need to work on and people may need more education on. Well, look, I mean, it's also good because those people who come to you, you know, they'll hear your story and they'll go, well, look, you know, this guy does all this stuff, but he had a few setbacks, but he was able to get over it. And that's good. You know, resilience, when people hear about someone's resilience, it draws them more towards you because they know that you're someone who's honest and upfront about what's happened. And look, this happened, this happened, but I'm back here and now we've done this and I've tweaked some things. And then they go, wow, actually, that's someone I want to work with, someone who's not afraid to say, there was a few problems yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent what about yourself have you has it been a struggle for you for getting like what you want out of your goals and your direction like is it because everyone has their own journey um and i think everyone has their own struggles with it well look i mean i guess we were talking before you know i had a struggle last year because my mum kept having falls and had serious injuries Uh, We were also told she had terminal cancer, which then after four months, they told us, no, they were wrong. I also had my housemate who I'd lived with for 22 years have terminal cancer and he was in and out of hospital. So last year, it was really hard to plan what I wanted to do because from week to week, I didn't know where I would be or how serious the cancer would be for my housemate, Adrian. And in those last few months, he was still convinced that he was going to get better, even though everybody around him could see that he wasn't, he was declining quickly. And he came home for his last week before he went into hospital and then the the end started. So I looked after him here at home when I wasn't at work. And when you have things like that, you have to put your goals on the back bench. But it doesn't mean you still don't have goals because then this year I was already working on, well, who am I going to interview for this podcast? What am I going to talk about? I've got some really strong inspirational women, strong inspirational men talking about, I think sort of, I I sort of went off track a little bit and sort of, I, I wasn't doing what I started the podcast for, which was real people talking about real stories. And look, I've had some amazing people on, but it was just finding my roots again and and working out why I want to speak to people and what my direction is. So the goal with the podcast is to record a bigger series this season so that I can get all those people on that I've wanted to speak to, but I just haven't had time because, you know, most seasons I do 15 episodes and last year they were being cut back to 10 because I just didn't have the opportunity to record because I was doing something else. And my other goals are to do more lives on Instagram because so many people contact me and say, I, I heard your live and you spoke about a psychologist who does this or a type of therapy like this. And, you know, I've been seeing a psychologist for two or three years and I'd never realized that you could ask those questions or, you know, you could try a different therapy. So I think things like lives are really important because you get that interaction where people can comment, ask questions. And, you know, I always have a guest like you could come on and talk about men's mental health. And, you know, there might be some men there that go, oh, how do I start? You know, but it's just about giving something back to the community that can open up dialogue and conversations around mental health, particularly because I think there's too many, there's too many restrictions around the world on who can either afford mental health, uh, like psychologists, psychiatrists, counsellors, And there's also huge waiting lists. So whatever I talk about, I'm not saying this is for you, but I'm saying in general, these are some things around mental health. And if you've got something that you're worried about, either listen into a podcast, uh, see if there's someone doing some free counselling in your area, because that's another thing. A lot of places have free counsellors if you can't afford to go and people don't realise that they're there. Providing a hub for people to change their life and to progress in their life, which is amazing. And I think as well, like what you mentioned, there's so many, there's been a lot of things happening for you last year. And one of the things that I didn't even realize was there's four different forms of energy. There's physical, there's mental, there's emotional and there's spiritual. And when I started to dive into this a little bit more, the, the emotional aspect. And like you can put, I realized when things happen to me, like sometimes we can just be, have this sort of thought that 
this is my plan and this is where I'm meant to be by the end of the year. And this is the things that are meant to get done. And either the podcast or the work schedules or the demands, but we never actually take into consideration the energy that we have available to execute on that. And sometimes we just don't have the bandwidth for it. And it's that ability to be able to push forward. Like right now you're pushing forward with the season and you're pushing forward with the guests, but also the ability to pull back. And that's what I find myself on a day-to-day basis like educating and helping people around and being aware of is when they can push forward to fully harness that and go for it but when they need to pull back being able to pull back and like i mentioned the word the phrase earlier on giving yourself permission to pull back and recharge and re-energize i like to use the analogy of like a, a formula one car where if you don't use the pit stop every now and again you'll you'll not be able to go as fast as around good that, yeah that, that's what we need and yeah, there's so many more analogies I can go into, but I think we all need to just recognize energy isn't just like what you eat. It's emotional, it's mental, it's physical, and it's just being that aware and being able to... And, and definitely that. sleep, I think, is a really important one, which I think a lot of people nowadays take for granted that, you know, I only need six hours or five hours or maybe even eight, but they don't have eight hours of good rested sleep. Um, you know, I, I, I'm i anywhere between about seven and nine hours sleep, depending on if it's the weekend and I've got the next day off. But, um, yeah, I realise that if I don't sleep, if like if I go to bed at two o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to function very well the next day. But if I go to bed about 10 or 11 and I get up at seven, then I feel a lot better. Yeah, I t- sleep, like you're going to be sleeping a third of your life. Like if you think of a 24-hour period, seven hours, eight hours, you're going to be sleeping a third of your life. Majority of your information and that you're processing, that you're understanding, all done during your sleep. But I like to think of it like this because I think that, We can all sort of get information. Meditation is good. Going out for walks is good. Eating certain foods are good. Sleep. And we can get caught up in the caught up in the surface level sort of aspect of it or what's best and get overwhelmed by it and try new fat, try new phases of things. I like to keep things really simple. Imagine you've got an energy account. Okay. You've got a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars or euros or dirhams, wherever you're listening to this. Imagine you've got 100 of those um, points, right? Well, two points. That's the energy that you have available within a day. Like that is just the energy that you've got. Our job and our duty is ultimately you're going to be spending energy with your work, with processing things, with walking, with eating, with functioning. Ultimately, that's going to come down over the day and some things are going to take bigger dents. So if you get a very hard conversation or a very hard meeting, that's going to take 30 of those points. What we have to do is we have to build systems that give little deposits and build that that balance back up. So that might be a better night's sleep. That might be a nap. That might be a walk. That might be a great quality conversation with someone. That might be making sure your blood sugar levels are all okay. That might be just taking five minutes of no demand where you're just present. That might be playing something like it might be uh, playing with your child or whatever your ability to just find those small things in your day that help you keep that energy balance higher and it doesn't matter the method it just is you having those daily deposits and that allow for you to do that we all i think are quite aware of a holiday like every six months 24 weeks it's kind of programmed but i don't think we need to solve the solution we need to solve the problem and get a solution on a daily level. That's where we're missing. And that's what most people just don't really think about because their day-to-day and their working schedule, if you think about it, it just goes by like a blur. That's where people need to place their focus on to really maximize their energy. And that's done. Like like we we analyze um, energy scores, productivity scores and stuff. Like, yes, people come to us for a better body, but ultimately like i want to help them with everything so we analyze it and we generally know this like i think last year out of 60 percent of the intake they had increased their energy levels by over 30 percent increasing your energy wow. levels by over 30 percent is massive that is more life bar that isn't like me literally saying you can do more in your life if you have more energy you'll be better for those around you you'll be better you'll be thinking your your best ideas come when you're high energy when you're you've got the capacity so it's like it's it's looking at it on that daily level and making small little interventions that can really just supercharge your life 
by really taking it quite seriously. So how do you do that with someone who comes to see you? Do you sit them down and we do. work out a plan? Yeah, so we do an audit to begin with. So like I think for any listener to this is like actually do an audit and think about the, the it's a pretty, I'm a, I'm a, I ask very hard questions, but I do, but if I was to be a cameraman, I was to be like build a documentary or like just watch you like action by action, what, where's the leaks? Where's the leaks? Like if you want to fulfill your potential, you want a great body, you want to progress in your business, you want a great relationship, all those things, where are the leaks that are happening right now? Because we behave our way to that. We can't just expect to wake up, Jack, we can't just expect to wake up with a business built. It's small behaviors. So it's like actually auditing all of the little leaks. So it might be when you wake up, you scroll on your phone. When you wake up, you go straight to the coffee rather than delaying it. When you wake up, you are focusing on low value tasks. When you, in your day, there's no moment where you're actually bringing joy to the day. We can all have a lot of tasks that we need to do and demands that need filled, but even just doing small things like that can progress your energy. So it's auditing everything and then just looking at the leaks and filling those and adding alternatives and creating like a a, a habitual process. Like let's say, for example, someone got on top of their sleep and they added one extra sleep cycle and you focused on that for two weeks and then you've done that for every single week. Like one thing I say to a lot of people is you're going to be eating every single day for the rest of your life. So like the rest of your life. So if we took it week by week where we focused on your your breakfast and we made it, uh, you're not just grabbing your kids cereal because that's just going to set you up for a sugar crush and you made it something better. Like if you got on top of that and you worked on it for two to four weeks and that was just locked in, that's massive. And like majority of people, like on average, they eat the same 10 meals like quite consistently. So it's just about making small changes, locking it in yeah. and scaffolding it on top. Wow. Yeah. What's sort of like amazing. coming to mind for you when I'm talking about this? Oh, well, while you were talking about that, I was thinking, because I'm gluten-free because I have celiac disease, and I was thinking, oh, yeah, because I want to, I, I eat Sultana brand gluten-free every day and I eat it because it's easy to eat. You know, you just have to pour some milk on it. I put some fruit on the top and eat it. But I've always thought to myself, you know, I should get up and maybe have a couple of boiled eggs on one piece of toast and that would keep me going a lot longer because I know on weekends when I have some bacon and eggs in the morning, I don't feel hungry till two or three in the afternoon. But when I eat the cereal by 11 o'clock, I'm starving. So, you know, things that will sustain me longer would be better. This week I've just changed my menu to making sure that I have vegetables at lunch and dinner and then a protein. So at tea time I'll have either chicken or fish or the other way around, so fish or chicken at lunch. And just eating those different things, I've felt that my energy is a bit better than like just grabbing a sandwich or, I mean, gluten-free bread is full of so many preservatives. But, you know, it's the easy thing you go for. But when you actually are mindful about what you're going to eat and you eat something and take a little bit longer, you know, I I think, oh, look, I'm not going to do vegetables tonight. It's going to take me so long to cook. And then the other night I did a whole big pot of steamed vegetables and it took me like 10 minutes to cut them up and put them in and heat them through, you know, and then I had those with a piece of grilled chicken and I thought, God, 15 minutes and I've got a, a healthy meal, whereas I think, oh, you know, something on toast is quick. Well, yeah, it is about five minutes quicker, but it doesn't fulfill you as much as the other meal does. So we've covered energy, right? And then there's I've came up with five pillars that basically stop me from leveling up and taking my life to a different level. Energy is one of them. And second one is being passive. I was passive in my life because I ultimately, I had loads of people define me, loads of people talked uh, certain things about me. I had all these aspirations, but I never went for them. I was a doormat in conversations. I always put others first. And it's your ability now just to recognize any behavior that is just passive when you're just going by things, when you're just accepting, when you're not really like actually acting on what you deep down want. So that's the second. The energy is one of them. The second one is um, being passive. The third one is being messy. So messy in regards to like 
your time, your structure. If you've got a goal and you've got an outcome, like ultimately, like I said earlier on, you behave your way to it. So there needs to be KPIs and targets. Now, maybe you don't want to be so process driven like that, but like if if you are even living messy, like caught up in tons of drama in your life, caught up even just your environment, even your headspace, like what you're letting in and what you're not letting in with your attention and things is key. So it's like even just living messy. It's a it's a trait that really that I experience. And I just notice when people aren't fully leveling up and fulfilling their potential, it's because of this. And then the fourth thing is vision. Like you need to have a clear vision, like of where you want to be or what you want or like how you want life to be. What do you want to be remembered for? What do you not want to be remembered for? Like what is it that you truly want to achieve? And the stress is in the gaps. If you don't have that in your in your mind, like truth be told, like a little hack that I do is I play a voice note to myself three times a day. There's three alarms and it keeps me focused on what I want and why I want it and stuff. Um, and it's not just like more, 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 more. It also as well is like, like you mentioned earlier on, I want to bring joy to my days. And that can just simply look like having a smile with someone when you're having a conversation that can just be like that earlier on I talked about being a little bit more present that can be things like that so it's just having a vision of how you want things to be but also how you want things to feel and what you want to experience and then the last thing is pretty much just actually like having that support system that serves you like you're not going to get to where you want to be without anything and I kind of felt that I had no support system or knowing that I could ask and we all know mentors and coaches and things and information, but it's not just that. It's your ability to extract support and it's your ability to extract support when you need it the most, to ask high quality questions, to get yourself in the right rooms, to as well, even on a, like, it doesn't always need to be these, I think if everyone has this illusion that needs to be all these high level Tony Robbins, all these type of people, even just support from those around you, like with certain, with your day-to-day duties today, like, look, can you help me with this? Um, I'm struggling with this. I, I just need a little bit of clarity on this so that you can put any hesitancy out of your mind. It's even like for people like me and you, it's just like general support on a day-to-day basis so that you can be at your very best. Yeah, you mentioned earlier on about what do I do? One of the first questions I'll ask someone is I'll say, like, what does your very best look like? And when was the last time you were at your very best? And it's getting that support system so that we can get you to your very best. So I want the listener to think about that. Like, what is your very best? And that is in your body, in your life, in your work. But just really get that. And that's how do we get the support system around you? Because you're not going to get there yourself. And you certainly, even if you do, you'll just be able to take it to a new level by um, harnessing other people's support. And that's earlier, like these are all kind of interlinked, but there are sort of five key traits that I noticed in my own life that stopped me, that were hurdles um, from leveling up. And, and look, I mean, one really hit me because the last year and a half, you know, I've been so busy that I haven't kept my house as clean as I would normally do. Because, you know, before all this happened with Adrian and with my mum, you know, I cleaned the house through every week, made sure the house was nice nice to come home to felt good felt relaxing felt comfortable and then in the last year that sort of all went to the side because I was so rushed on everything else and the last month I've actually been going room by room cleaning out properly and getting rid of stuff I don't need because we all have so much stuff that when you really look at it you go I don't need half of this so once I started giving it away and throwing it away it's made the house feel more relaxed again, more calm, more positive because there's not mess everywhere you look. So, you know, saying that is a really important step to having more clarity in what you want to do and to stop you feeling bug- bogged down because when I would walk in and see the house, like it wasn't it wasn't like a bomb site or something out of hoarders, but it just didn't look great. So, you know, now that's all getting cleaned up, I'm like I walk in and I go, oh, actually, I'm glad to be home. It feels really good. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, you'll be able to recharge more by just doing that. And the other thing too, like the way I like the, when I'm sort of, I mentioned earlier on about auditing people and stuff, there's a training that I get the guys to go through. And it's basically like maximizing your energy. And you got to know when your energy is in green, amber, and red. And what are the signs where you're starting to go into amber, starting to go into red? One of the key signs when you're starting to go into amber is, yeah, the house will get a little bit messy. 
the, another sign will be like you'll feel time hostile. Another sign might be like you maybe slip up in a little bit of personal care. You maybe another personal another sign will be like you feel like it takes half an hour, sixty minutes to get up and out of bed. And you define your own sort of like amber and red signal signs. And then when you notice that your energy is going into amber or red, then you have a plan to get you out of it. So it's like right when I feel red, I need to take two full days off work. When I feel amber, I need to not go to my phone and, and let other people get my demands and get my like get my energy and just give it away for a day or like just put that to the side whatever it is for you and it's building that lifestyle plan for for you and the goal is is like how do we stay at your best energy levels in green more often and if we can win more green days in the 90 day period or a year period like whatever if we can be in green more often as a byproduct, you're going to get better results. Like for me, from from my perspective, being like a fitness coach, when are you most likely to eat shit when your energy's low and you're busting and tired? If I boost your energy and get you into green, oh, is there a chance that you're going to eat shit? Not really. So it's like, that was my theory. It was like, I was obsessed with like, as I said, this all came from me wanting to be in better shape. I was obsessed with like, how can I like, like as bad as it sounds, like, when I have a client, it's like, they're my experiment. It's like, how can I get them looking incredible? So then I went into all the depths of it. Why can't they do this? What is this? And like the butler in me, which was like really getting into all the nitty gritty details after doing that hundreds of times, I realized, right, it's not actually that they don't want it. They're paying me money. They're in the gym. They want to work hard. But I was empathetic and I was actually understanding, right, well, why is it? I was asking really good quality questions to understand it's just low energy. It's not the fact that they don't want to. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier on, I used, I went to a communication coach for a while and I started to understand language and I paid attention to clients' language in regards to, I noticed that when someone simply just didn't want to go, because when I realized some people don't want to get in a relationship, like some people they want, they're happy with where they're at. They know that there's more, yeah. but they're, it just there's not a massive payoff by going to the next step. And what I noticed by the people that wanted to go to the next step, and I know that I can provide, they had different types of languages. Like I'm really trying this. I'm doing this. I want this. I, this happened. How did I overcome it? It was action orientated. So then when I realized the communication and I realized that point, I realized, right, it's energy. And then I was like, right, okay, here's the energy. So it's like, what can I put into place? So it was just like really, yeah getting into it and it was cool because now i've been able to like pick up these things i'm still learning like so i am but it's like i was able to put things into place and really listen and understand um what was actually happening look when i was in my early 30s i did a program called body for life and i can't remember who the guy was who did it but it was myoplex like um protein drinks, caffeine pills, which weren't great, but then, and then there was something else that you put in it. And do you know what? For those 12, 18 months, I stuck to that program. I was, I had the V shape. I didn't have a six pack, but it was getting that way. I was slim. I looked great. I felt healthy. I was eating really healthy. Everybody was saying to me, oh my God, what's happened to you? Uh, not that I looked bad before that because I was still young, but as I've got older and I've got all these illnesses, I find it hard to do any exercise because with fibromyalgia, you do exercise one day, the next day you're depleted of energy. So it becomes like a vicious cycle. And, uh, you know, doctors and that specialist say to me, oh, you need to go walking, you need to do this. And I said, look, up until about eight years ago, I was walking 5Ks four or five days a week with the dogs and I was losing weight again. But then something happened and I wasn't able to do that walking again. I, I don't, I can't remember if it was fibro or maybe a back condition, but I sort of gave up. And I mean, we've been talking for a while now. And if you remember a few weeks back, I, I had a week off where I wasn't feeling great and thought I was having a heart attack and stuff like that. But since then I've started to bounce back. And I think it might be that shock of having that day where I, fainted and went off to hospital but that's made me see things in a completely different way so well not completely but a lot better to what it was before that mm. and I think sometimes those shocks that happen they create a, a change and then it's up to you to follow through with the change it's like when I first got diagnosed with fibromyalgia you know most people would go oh my god that's awful and it was awful and it is awful but that gave me a stopgap where I went and started learning my counselling. So I did my diploma in counselling, started my Bachelor of Counselling. And if I hadn't have been sick and had six months where I didn't work, 
I would never have had that opportunity because all I did was work, 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 work. So to me, even though I have bouts where fibromyalgia is really bad, I still think that was a good thing to happen to me because it gave me the opportunity to change my life in another direction. And, you know, having this scare last uh, a few weeks ago, you know, that will probably give me the spur on to do more things again. Like I'm already thinking, right, I've got to start taking the dog out for a walk and I've done more cleaning around the house. And so I've started to feel a bit more active and feel it in my head and think it in my head. And I think what you were saying before about energy and learning communication with people, because people can say to you, yeah, I want to go to the gym, but really they're going, I don't want to go to the fucking gym, you know? And I, I go through bouts of that. Like when I did that body for life at the gym every day, bought a home gym, doing the gym at home every day. Um, then I stopped using the gym. Then I went back into the gym some years later. So it's, you know, we know we have to do these exercises and stuff to be fitter and healthier, but also in our head, we've got, you don't want to do that. <laughs> And I guess that's where you come in. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think different, different. You go through different seasons where you you value different things. Um, but at the core of that, there should always be some form of way to keep that energy balance high, keep the health high, keep some form of activity. I think from your experiences, because you've had multiple different experiences with going all in with the body for life program having a health care being um given the fibromyalgia fibromyalgia the, yeah fibromyalgia yeah like what, what advice would you give people because i don't think you need to be a coach to give these advices all these things we're talking about they're simple they're not like crazy in depth what advice would you from your experience with health and your managing yourself and your body yeah what are, well what look what i would, would say is and this is what i've said quite a few times is fibromyalgia can be the worst thing that happens to you if you give up and if you agree to what the specialists tell you that you're probably going to end up in bed for the rest of your life not being able to do much i was told i would probably be in a wheelchair by the time i was 50 because i would be so exhausted and sick and the other one was you know don't expect to do much because you're going to be too tired to do anything and that was really the thing that started me in a change was after that six months of sickness, I started doing the diploma. And I also started by, look, I spent a whole day vacuuming a lounge room floor because I was so exhausted. I do a quarter of it and then I'd have to have a sleep. And then I did another quarter, but I wasn't going to let it get, get to me. I, I couldn't give in. I had to do that. And actually the first couple of times I walked the dogs, I'd walk for 15, 20 minutes, my legs and my back and my arms, fibromyalgia is the worst pain you can have in your life it's excruciating and I would get that 15 20 minutes and think I've got to go home I'm in so much pain and then I'd think well if I go home I'm in the same position so if I walk another five minutes then I can turn around and go home so I'd do another five minutes then go home then have probably the rest of the day on the couch in agony but then the next day I would do it again and I would keep doing that 20 minutes and then gradually I increased it to 30 minutes, 35 minutes until I was walking an hour and 15 minutes three to four times a week. Answering my own question of what I need to do now and that's maybe just go for a 10-minute walk somewhere, 10 minutes back, so that's a 20-minute walk and do that every second day to start building myself up again. Ben, you've, you've fixed me. <laughs> you know, you know to, you've got... A, a, as you said, you've been extremely resilient. What drives that resilience? Because like when you get tired, you take a break and then you keep going. Not many people would do that and without the condition. So what drives that? What What's the internal talk that you're like, I have to do it because of? I have to do it because I'm not going to spend my life in bed. And I've got one life. Some people have told me, yeah, but you might be, you know, reborn or, you know, past life, stuff like that. That's all good. But I've got one life at the moment that I need to do stuff in and I want to do stuff in. So I think for me, it's a, a, a want. I want to do new things. I want to create. Like I wanted to do a podcast. I didn't know if it would take off or not. I wanted to talk to people. I wanted to find out about their lives and how what changes they've made and what gives them the up and go to keep going and doing what they're doing. I like uh, resilience in people. And I feel like I've been resilient because no matter, look, I've got five health issues, no matter what happened. So it's fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, celiac disease, and thyroid disease. Now I've got all those. And I know loads of people in one or two of those 
three of those and they go to me oh but how do you do it and I go because I'm not going to give in you know I might have you know in a month's time I might have a week on the couch where I'm really fibroed out and I can't do anything but well I'm gonna I was gonna say but I know it it changes but at Christmas time I had seven days where I had fibro and I think it was getting to the end of a year finishing everything up at work and stuff having Christmas and then being able to have a break. So I had fibro for seven, eight days. I was exhausted. I slept pretty much 20 hours a day. And by the third or fourth day, I did say to my mum, I think this is the rest of my life. And she said, don't be stupid. You know this is what happens. You get either three days where you have to rest or five days or seven days. It'll it'll change. And then it did. It, by the sixth day, I started to feel good again. I didn't need to sleep all day and all night. And then by the seventh, eighth day, I started to feel a lot better. So what you have to do is not give in. You're going to tell me something in a minute, aren't you, that I need to do? <laughs> well, I'm not. And, you know, earlier on, the reason why I'm, like, saying is because earlier on I said about being passive. That's a trait that I noticed. You are not being passive whatsoever. And when you notice that you're being passive, you're like, I have to do this for more. Like, I ha- there's, it's a period. And it's that trait. And the reason why I ask is because I really, like, again, those are, like, the pillars that I sort of look at that stops someone from really going to another level in their life. And you've had all of these conditions and you've not been passive. Most people out there are passive. Like they just yeah. let things pass by. They don't go and get after it. They lie in bed without a health condition. You've got those health conditions and you're not being passive. You've got that drive, which is like, look, I can't do this because I want to live a great quality life. I want to have more experiences. I want to do that. So that's the reason why I asked that. And I just asked that because ultimately it's those drivers we all have but it's just tapping into that more and again that driver earlier on i mentioned about the other pillar being vision you've got a vision of a better life you've got a vision of more experiences you've got a vision of that so it's like that is the core that'll really help someone level up is not being passive keeping the vision in mind your mom was your support system these little habits and hacks and stuff that you're doing with your walks and stuff that's your energy and then as well like you've said about small aspects the about like having right i do 10 minutes 20 minutes it's like you've got a bit of a plan so it's like when you plan things are messy that's when things fall apart so i hope that like you've done you're doing this but i hope that like you can just see how i've decoded that and like if you just recognize that more they it'll just allow for you to have more success yeah look i mean until you explained it all about the energy and the vision and the support you know but you've put it in such a succinct way that makes it so easy to understand and to realize that you are doing those things i did want to just say you know with the fibromyalgia i think one of the biggest problems for most people who are diagnosed is they are offered medications and i tried all of them when the specialist gave them to me because that was what they told me i should do And if you're on medication, I'm not telling you to stop. However, for me, having that medication really slowed me down. And they'd put you on one and then you'd have side effects. So they go, oh, take this one. That counteracts those side effects. So you take the next one and then there's side effects from that. And they go, oh, take this one. That counteracts those side effects. Before I knew it, I was on five different pills and nothing was working. I was just like a zombie. And I went back to my doctor and I said, look, we have to take this one out and this one out. Okay, we have to wean you off. Okay, let's do that. So we did that. And then when I had the last three left, I went, I can't take any of these because they're slowing me down. And I've already got an illness that is slowing me down so I can't have other things that are slowing me down otherwise I can't do anything and he's like oh I understand and my fibro specialist said to me probably about four or five years ago he said look I don't know anyone who's got fibro who works in their own business who does all the things you're doing you're studying all those things it's amazing and I go well you told me that I was going to be in bed And I knew that wasn't going to be my life. So from that moment, I had to make small changes to make the bigger changes so that I could keep going and to get to where I am now. Doesn't mean I'm not sick. Doesn't mean I don't have to take a few pills. I have to take thyroid pill and I take a blood pressure pill. But they're okay because they don't slow my whole system down. Those other drugs were just slowing me down so much that there was one I had only was on it for five days. I couldn't talk by the sixth day. I was slurring and And I thought, God, if this is what they're giving people, no wonder people are getting fed up or getting into that uh, mentality of I'm sick because it could be the medication that's actually making you sicker than what the illness is. I'm really glad that you've got this podcast and you're talking about that because I could imagine if 
someone was going through those the depths of those struggles with those illnesses they would just need that they need to feel heard and that they're not the only person in there i think definitely get that out there more look it, it does work ben for some people but then other people i've had emails from saying you're not as sick as me. You don't understand what I'm going through, blah, 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 blah. And look, I don't. I don't understand what you're going through. I know what your sickness is. I don't know if you're sicker than me or not. However, however sick you are, anybody, however sick you are, you have to have a plan of where you're going to go to with that sickness. Because if you're in a relationship, definitely within a year to two years to three years, your partner is going to go, well, look, I've got one life. I can't, I love you. And, you know, I'm really sorry for you that you're this sick, but I need to do things in my life because people are going to want to move on. They're not going to want to be around someone who's sick all the time. And it's terrible because, you know, I've felt it. I know what it's like. I know what it's like when I've got seven days sick. I don't have people dropping in to visit me because I'm just sick, you know, but you have to look at what small steps you can make, even if it's just that you sit up for the day rather than lay in bed, because sitting up for a day, you know, and you might be tired by the end of the day, but then try that another few days later. Anything you can do that tries to get you back to normality, no matter how long it takes you. I didn't care if it took me the rest of my life to be able to start doing other things, but I knew that if I didn't do anything, no one's coming to help me. Doctors only know what they know. And nine times out of 10 with an illness like fibromyalgia, they don't actually understand what's wrong with you. The specialists have an idea because they've studied it all, but they don't know what it feels like to be living in that. Yeah. And I think that aspect where you took charge and said, no one's coming to help me. It's big. <laughs> so, but if anybody wants any help, you can help them. You are the level up man. And look, I was going to say, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but before I was looking off camera because I was actually looking back over your stuff that you'd put up. And I remember looking at your stuff when you first sort of started or when I first started looking at you and just the change in you from back then to now, your little videos and stuff, you're a lot more confident. You understand a lot more. You've obviously built your body. And look, if you haven't seen Ben, he's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he's got a great body. He's worked at it and he's got himself into a good position. But do you know what I mean? You can see the transformation and that's what's important. When people see someone who's transformed themselves, then they can go, well, I can do that too. That's it. A hundred percent. When they see it and like you, one thing that I'm not the finished product and never will be, but it's, it's just, it's that aspect when you see other people leveling up, when you see other people progressing, other people doing more, it's, it's infectious. Um, I just really, it makes others want to, to, to really push on in their life. And even just hearing your story, Daniel, they're like, I am blown away. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> Like, what excuse have I got to go into it today? What excuse have I got to, like, when you're, when you're talking about, like, just having the health to be able to sit up, like, I'm just like, oh, like, in a good way. So, like, I know today I've came on and helped and give tips and stuff, but, like, you've also helped me just sharing your perspective with that. It's, it's incredible and, like, massive kudos to you. Well, look, I was going to say to you that, you know, when you came on and you were going to be, I thought you were going to be like the fitness guru, which you are, but I thought it was going to be all like, oh, and you have to do bench press and you have to do this. And I was thinking, oh, I don't really know what I'm going to speak to about, about this guy. But when you started bringing in your pillars and your traffic lights and that you studied communication, and then as you're talking, I'm realizing that you have a really good understanding of that person coming to see you. So it's not just, okay, you've got to change your diet and you've got to do a thousand weights. You actually understand how to communicate with people. And your little five uh, pillars are just amazing. And then when you showed me back how my pillars, how I fitted into all the pillars, it was like, my God, yeah, I am doing those things. And I didn't even know I was doing them. It's just brilliant, mate. Really good. Yeah. No, I really appreciate that. And like, I know I, I have. I've done my hours, like I have really done my hours working with people and a lot of people and studying them. And the reason why as well that I reshare the pillars, and I do this quite often with people, is because I believe in building people up from strength. So most people, when they come to me, fitness, it's always like, oh, I've got to do more, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a big believer in, well, let's look at what are you already doing like if you've never one, one way that i've helped people get into training after like never training like for 30 years is like right tell me 
where you're strong at in your life and it might be their career and then i'll unpack that and i'll be like right tell me everything about it all we need to do is transfer this over to yeah and this is like that earlier on when i was saying about that that client that lost nine stone in 10 months literally how we started she like we didn't even walk into the gym we literally we walked walked around the area for five minutes and I just started talking to her about her life, what she's into, the things that she's got going on. I remember talking about how she cares for others. And I was like, well, let's look at this. If you didn't care for others, like you put yourself forward, you do things you don't want to do. How could we do this with your walks and stuff? How can we do this with this? And I just transferred over. So it was a big belief of mine. And again, I think it's because when I was trying to progress and do like achieve goals, I always felt not enough. Like, I always felt like that body, not enough. Like, I'm not that, I'm not this, I'm not that. If you look at a lot of, like, especially in the fitness industry, it come that we make people feel not enough. Whereas my ethos is build people up from strength because everyone is fucking more powerful than what they realize. You are extremely, yeah. like, with your, with your resilience and everything. So as well as that, if you have that strength and you recognize it, what do you want to be like when you put your mind to fitness? You'll be an absolute machine. So you will. So that's yeah. like, that's one of the ways that I get people to recognize the strength in them. Because if I get you to recognize your strength, you'll be a machine. I used to as well be extremely insecure and not be able to publicly speak. And I, I've spoken in front of hundreds, spoken on TV, spoken on all, like loads of different variants and whatnot. And one of the things that helped me was like, just people need me as I am. They don't need me anymore or any less little things like that. And when I share that with other people and I like help build them up, they go and speak, they go and do it. They go and like start expressing themselves. And I was just like, that was class. So it's like, was, <laughs> I, get a, I get a kick out of that. Like just seeing them do it. So yeah, build people up from strength. Get your, even like for anyone listening to this, if you've got like something on today, how can you go into that meeting from a place of strength? rather than from a place of fear or stress or like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to do this. What can you do? Even if like you don't have the skill set, how can you get your like attitude into its strongest position? And if you do that, you, like, and you do that consistently, results will just happen. Amazing, mate. Look, it, it was a really good conversation. Yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just blown away by all the stuff that you've actually you know, studied and gone to and gone through and, you know, talking about, yeah, a couple of times with burnout, you know, because that's good because then people hear that and they go, he's not infallible, you know, he made, he he had some mistakes, he didn't know what he was doing, but he learned and he built that up and then he carried on, you know, because so many people get a couple of mistakes and go, oh, I can't do this. And it's like, well, you can, you just have to work out a way around it. And it could be that it takes you an hour, a day, a month to work out that thing. But if you don't keep working at it, you're never going to work it out. You just then give up and, you know, there's so many people out there who are either the ones that push forward and go, look, I can do this, I just need more time. And there's those that go, look, I can't do that, fuck it, I'll give up. And then, But then how do they feel the rest of their life that they gave that up? Maybe they get a better opportunity. Maybe they don't, you know. It's all about change and, and about uh, working towards things, isn't it? Yeah, they were just overcoming the hurdle or stopping at the hurdle. So, no, 100%. It's been a great conversation. And I hope for the listeners that they've gotten a lot and as well that they've actively like sort of, right, I'm going to do this one thing or I'm going to keep this one thing in mind now moving forward. And that was good as well. Take one thing and keep doing it for two to four weeks. Make one change. And then you can add on top of that, like the scaffolding you said. That was brilliant because a lot of people are all encompassed. I have to do all this today or I have to start all this. Whereas if you take one small thing like changing your breakfast, changing uh, something you do through the day, taking a half hour break at lunchtime or in the evening to just sit and meditate, you know, cement that in over those two to four weeks and then you have made a change yeah no 100 percent. i totally agree so look if you want to find ben it's ben heron h-e-r-o-n underscore level up 
You'll find him definitely on Instagram. Are you on other social media? Yeah, on Facebook as well, just Ben Heron uh, and my personal page. Um, we are going to be branching out and on the other forms, but Instagram's where you find uh, me mainly. And yeah, I know I've uh, dialed in to just men, but if you are a female, there'll be a lot of information that'll still be applicable and things for you. And if there's any questions off the back of today, like bits that you want to explore, bits that you want to ask on like every single day when I'm out on a walk, I pretty much just answer any questions in my inbox. So I'm more than happy to elaborate on aspects too to help you out. Brilliant. Well, look, it was such a different talk to what I expected. And, you know, I was wanting to talk to you, but I did think it was going to be a lot more just about physical fitness. And, you know, you talk about the mind and emotions and all those different things, which is great to see that you target all those areas, because if you target everything, then you can't fail, can you? Can't. And that's the, like, again, anyone can get a body for 12 weeks, but actually getting a body for long term and leveling up as a whole person, it, that's the the missing glue. And of course, yeah, on social media, like you do have to, people's eyes, you do need to show them visually, this is what we can help with. But then once you get in, we unpack everything. We really just make sure you've got everything, you're solid, and then you're good to go. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Ben. It was been, it's been exciting and enlightening to speak to you, and I'm glad we had this conversation. Awesome. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, that was another episode of Life Changes You. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and share on social media and subscribe. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram and watch live conversations on Wednesdays and get daily updates. You can also follow the YouTube channel and watch live conversations and listen to the podcast from there. Keep sending in your emails and messages as I love reading them and interacting with you, and I'll always respond to you. So until next week, take care of yourselves and each other.